Singapore is building three massive artificial islands off its east coast, spanning 800 hectares, twice the size of Marina Bay. These islands aren't just for new developments, they will act as a fortress against rising sea levels, shielding the mainland from floods that could reach 5 meters high by 2100. To make this possible, engineers will deploy 200 concrete caissons, each 50 meters long, sinking them into the seabed to form the foundation. A new reservoir, Singapore's 18th, will be enclosed within these islands, controlled by tidal gates and high-capacity pumps to manage storm surges. Can this $100 billion megastructure really hold back the ocean? And if sea levels rise faster than predicted, will it even be enough? All right, let's talk about Singapore, a city-state that's a powerhouse of finance, technology, and innovation. But there's one major problem, space. At just 734 square kilometers, Singapore is one of the smallest countries in the world, and nearly 6 million people are packed into this tiny island. And it gets worse. Singapore isn't just running out of land, it's sinking. Well, not exactly sinking, but sea levels are rising, and a third of Singapore is less than 5 meters above sea level. By 2100, storm surges and high tides could push water levels up by 4 to 5 meters, putting huge parts of the city underwater. Moving inland like other countries? Not an option. There's no inland in Singapore. So what do you do when the ocean is coming for your city? You fight back. And Singapore's battle plan? A $100 billion mega project called Long Island. But before we get into the details, we need to go back, way back, to see how Singapore has been solving this problem for decades. Singapore has been playing a game of expansion for over 60 years. Since 1960, the country has grown by 25%, all thanks to land reclamation. That means taking sand and other materials, dumping them into the ocean, and creating new land from nothing. Some of Singapore's most iconic places? Chani Airport, Marina Bay, East Coast Park? All built on reclaimed land. But this solution isn't cheap or easy. Singapore has spent billions of dollars on land reclamation, and to do it, they've had to import massive amounts of sand to the point that they became the world's largest importer of sand. That didn't go unnoticed. Neighboring countries like Indonesia, Malaysia, and Vietnam were supplying Singapore with sand until they realized they were literally watching their coastlines disappear. One by one, they banned sand exports. So with traditional land reclamation becoming more controversial, Singapore needed a new plan. And that brings us to Long Island. Long Island is a series of three massive islands planned to rise off Singapore's east coast, stretching from Marina East to Tanah Merah. Covering a combined area of 800 hectares, this project will effectively add a landmass twice the size of Marina Bay, one of Singapore's most valuable urban districts. But unlike past reclamation projects that focused on expanding space for homes and businesses, Long Island has a far more critical purpose – defending Singapore from rising sea levels. To serve this purpose, each of the three islands will be built at a higher elevation than Singapore's mainland, forming a natural barrier against coastal flooding. These islands won't just hold back the sea, they will reshape the coastline itself by creating an entirely new water body between the mainland and the artificial islands. This enclosed body of water will eventually become a new freshwater reservoir, Singapore's 18th, further strengthening the country's water resilience. But that's only part of the story. Long Island is also designed to be a fully functional urban extension of Singapore, with dedicated zones for residential and commercial developments, waterfront parks, and even an expansion of Chani Airport. Think of it as a multi-purpose shield, one that protects Singapore from climate change while also unlocking new economic and recreational opportunities. However, making this vision a reality requires some of the most advanced engineering techniques ever attempted in land reclamation. At first glance, Long Island might look like any other reclaimed land project, 
But instead of just dumping millions of tons of sand into the sea, Singapore is taking a smarter, more sustainable approach. This is where engineering meets innovation. The key to Long Island's success lies in its tidal control system, its three distinct functional zones, and its groundbreaking construction process. Let's break it down. Since Long Island will sit parallel to Singapore's east coast, it will naturally form a large enclosed water body between itself and the mainland. This reservoir won't just be a static lake, it will be actively managed using a series of tidal gates and water pumps. These tidal gates, placed at key points along the perimeter of the reservoir, will function as high-tech floodgates. During normal conditions, the gates will remain open, allowing natural water flow between the reservoir and the sea. But when storm surges or heavy rainfall occur, these gates will close to prevent seawater from entering and flooding low-lying areas. Excess water from storm surges, extreme rainfall, or high tides will be pumped out using powerful water pumps, ensuring that water levels inside the reservoir remain stable. This system is modeled after Singapore's Marina Barrage, which has already proven to be an effective flood control solution. However, Long Island's flood protection system will operate on an even larger scale, covering 20 kilometers of new coastal and reservoir parks. This means that during extreme weather events, Long Island will serve as a giant buffer, absorbing storm impacts and keeping Singapore's mainland safe from devastating floods. Each of the three islands within Long Island will be developed with a specific purpose in mind, balancing the needs of coastal protection, urban expansion, and recreation. One section will be designed for residential and commercial use, featuring high-rise apartments, office spaces, and retail hubs. Another section will focus on recreational activities, creating vast stretches of green parks, artificial beaches, and waterfront leisure spaces. With 20 kilometers of new coastal and reservoir parks, this area will triple the existing waterfront recreational space in East Coast Park. The third section of Long Island will serve as an extension of Chani Airport and its aviation-related industries. This will provide additional space for logistics, transport hubs, and business developments, solidifying Singapore's position as a global aviation powerhouse. Now, all of this sounds great, but how exactly are they going to build these islands? That's where things get really interesting. Unlike traditional land reclamation, which relies heavily on imported sand, Long Island will use a more efficient and environmentally sustainable method, the caisson technique. A caisson is a massive, hollow concrete structure that acts as a building block for land reclamation projects. Instead of dumping sand into the ocean to create new land, prefabricated caissons are placed directly on the seabed to form the foundation of the islands. Each caisson used for Long Island will be 50 meters long, several meters wide, and made of high-strength concrete. These structures will be built on land and then floated out to sea. Once in position, they will be carefully lowered onto a stable seabed foundation, where they will act as the outer walls of the new islands. This process will require a total of 200 caissons, which will be produced at a rate of four per week. At this pace, it will take around 50 weeks just to manufacture the required number of caissons. Once placed, these caissons will be filled with ballast materials, such as gravel, sand, or water to ensure they remain anchored to the seabed. Over time, the space inside and between the caissons will be backfilled with engineered materials to create solid, stable land. The caissons used in Long Island will be made of specialized high-strength concrete designed to withstand marine conditions for up to 150 years. Unlike traditional reclamation techniques, which can be prone to erosion and subsidence, this caisson-based method ensures greater structural stability and long-term durability. And here's the best part. Because these caissons are modular, they can be replaced or upgraded over time without disrupting the entire island. This means that Long Island can adapt to future environmental changes, ensuring that Singapore stays ahead in the fight against rising seas. Of course, as with any mega project of this scale, the price tag is just enormous. 
The Singaporean government has estimated that the country's efforts to combat rising sea levels could cost at least $100 billion over the next century, and Long Island is expected to be a major part of that investment. Building three artificial islands, installing massive tidal gates, constructing reservoirs, and developing entire urban districts on reclaimed land requires an unprecedented amount of resources, manpower, and technology. But the cost isn't just financial. Environmental concerns have already sparked debates about whether this project is truly the best long-term solution. Singapore has a long history of land reclamation, but it has come at a cost. Over 60% of the country's coral reefs have already been lost, largely due to previous reclamation projects that disrupted marine ecosystems. Scientists warn that Long Island could accelerate this destruction, damaging marine biodiversity, coastal fisheries, and delicate underwater habitats. Some environmental groups argue that large-scale reclamation not only destroys ecosystems, but also contributes to climate change by releasing carbon stored in seabed sediments. Critics also question whether Long Island will be a permanent solution or just a temporary fix. Climate models predict that global sea levels could rise by up to one meter by 2100, but if melting ice caps in Antarctica and Greenland accelerate, those projections could be underestimating the real threat. If sea levels rise faster than expected, Long Island could become obsolete before it even serves its full purpose. Skeptics argue that while Singapore is taking a bold step in climate adaption, no amount of engineering can fully control nature's unpredictable forces. Long Island is not something that will appear overnight. The project will unfold over several decades, with different phases carefully planned to balance feasibility, cost, and environmental considerations. The first major step is 2024 to 2029, during which Singapore will conduct feasibility studies. These include engineering assessments, environmental impact evaluations, and public consultations to determine how to move forward. During this phase, authorities will also finalize detailed designs, materials sourcing, and construction strategies. If everything goes as planned, actual construction will begin in the 2030s. It will happen in phases over the next two to three decades. The sheer scale of the project means that different sections of Long Island will take shape at different times, depending on funding, environmental approvals, and engineering progress. The full completion of Long Island is expected to extend beyond 2050, possibly taking up to 50 years before it is fully operational. At its core, Long Island is about securing Singapore's future in an era of rising seas and climate uncertainty. If completed successfully, it will protect the city-state from coastal flooding, provide new land for housing and business developments, and add a major new water reservoir to strengthen Singapore's fresh water supply. Let us know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for more deep dives into the world's biggest mega projects.